Coach, how eager are you to kind of finally get to see what Darrens and Evans can do uh, in person after not being able to get anything but a Zoom look at him uh, throughout the whole offseason? Very excited. You know, um, you know, anytime you get a new player, uh, particularly for me, this is the first time I've had a uh, player drafted since uh, we've been here. So I'm super excited to, you know, I loved how I, you know, loved his film from college and um, anxious to, to get out and really see what he can do uh, when we start moving around live. And this may be a little bit more of a question for Arthur, but I'll, I'll throw it at you first. When you've got two running backs like Derek and Darrington who are so different from each other, how do you keep from being predictable when one or the other is in the game? Well, I, I mean, I think, again, um, obviously they are two different backs. Um, but, you know, Derek, Derek has some things that he can do both in a run and pass game. And you know, because we haven't had Darrington in a, in a game situation, NFL game situation, or a lot of practice situations, uh, just go off of what we've seen in college film and what little bit we've done now. Um, obviously, he has the ability to run the ball, uh, have to be the receiver. So, um, you know, obviously, we'll, we'll do that game plan and that kind of thing. But until we get out and run around live, you know, we're just going to go uh, based on what we've seen in, in terms of drafting him that he is a runner and he can't catch the ball out of the backfield. David Beauclair. Tony, we, we've seen the last couple of years Derrick Henry be really good and productive late in the year in games. I, I'm curious if you can kind of talk about, though, how consistent his practice habits are and how that sort of factors into him eventually getting on the roles that he's gotten on. I think that's uh, really a key part of it. You know, the, he's consistent all the time in terms of his work ethic and practice. He's consistent in terms of his work ethic here in a meeting room, you know, and I think by him being consistent in those ways all year long that, you know, as time, as time goes on, as the season goes on, you know, he's seeing things better. He's, he's understanding things better in terms of what the defenses are giving him. And, and then uh, obviously he's, he's done a good job running the ball, but, you know, I think it's also, um, part the offensive line tight ends, uh, you know, they're doing their jobs up front. And then, you know, uh, Art and Keith and the offensive staff coming up with, with ways to uh, scheme defenses up uh, and give, give our guys an opportunity to be successful, put them in position to be successful. How much pride is there for a running backs coach when one of his guys leads the league in rushing? Well, it's, it's a lot of pride for, for all of us, you know. Um, I'm excited. The O-line's excited. Keith's excited. Todd's excited. Um, you know, so uh, I wish I was out there. It would be different if I was running the ball, <laughs> you know. But um, so I'm happy for, for our team, you know, and then I'm happy for, for Derek as an individual. Teron? Good to see you, Coach Tony. Uh, with with Derek, this I think is his first year as he's the longest tenured running back in, in the room. Have you seen a difference in the way he's kind of been a leader in, in the virtual meetings with him having been like the veteran now? You know, virtual meeting stuff, um, you know, when we were to get when we were together this spring doing that, he, he took a role, but I think Derek is really good in terms of his leadership when he's in person. Uh, because now when we're doing things, you know, in a meeting room, he can answer questions. And one of the things that we do uh, in the organization, uh, um, all positions as coaches uh, from the head coach down, we do ask our guys a lot of questions. And when you have the ability to ask, you know, who you, a guy that you consider a leader questions and they can answer the questions and people, the entire team or the position group can see it. Uh, obviously, it makes everyone want to do well when their when their name is called and asked questions of. But then, the other thing I think Derek uh, really uh, does a great job is when we go when we do have an opportunity to go on the field and do drill work and things like that. He sets the tone because uh, th I can't think of one day that I've ever had to get on Derek in the time that I've coached him about his effort in practice. He goes when when he goes, he goes, and I think 
uh, more than talking about it or talking virtually, that really sets a tone for the entire group when, you know, you see a guy with that's uh, has some success, the success he's had, and then he goes out on the field and works the way that he works. I think that is as much um, – that really sets the tone as much as anything else or anything that he can say. What is it you would say about him that allows him to, you know, carry the ball 300 plus times and still average over five yards per carry? Like that's a lot of, you know, wear and tear throughout a season, but he seems to just continue to be able to, to do that. Wait, well, you know, he, he, God has blessed him, you know, in, in a lot of ways that's, that's God given talent. <clears throat> and, and then you give him, I give him a lot of credit for the way he takes care of his body. Um, as I've seen over the past three years, two and a half years, the way that he takes care of his body, um, he spends time in the training room and then, you know, his workout regimen through the off season. Um, you know, as you see, he posts videos, so he works extremely hard at it. He works extremely hard to take care of himself uh, off the field as well. Um, so, and then he, and then, you know, part of his off-season work, he, he's very well conditioned, you know. Uh, and so then when he comes in, you know, he's so well conditioned, he works his tail off when he's here to stay in that, that condition. He does a great job pushing himself through the workouts here with the strength staff, and they do a great job. So, um, I think just his consistency, you know. Thank you. Jim Wyatt. Hi, Tony. Good to see you. Uh, I heard you talk about Darrington a little bit earlier. Uh, I know Ryan and John New, who worked with him in South Florida, to kind of talk about him being a natural pass catcher. Is that what you saw from him when you watched tape of him in college? And, and what are some of his other strengths that you hope to take advantage of here in the league? Yeah, you know, he has a receiver background. You know, he was a receiver as a freshman, I believe, at, at App State. So, you know, by, by going into college and as a receiver and having those opportunities to play and run routes and work um, as a position in, in a position group, working receiver drills and things like that, um, you saw that he had some route running ability uh, and obviously to play the receiver position, you got to be able to, to catch the ball. Uh, so I'm looking, you know, we saw that and then his return ability um, and, and the kickoff return game. And then, you know, obviously running the ball, he, he, he did a great job when he ran the out, uh, outside zone scheme that they ran there at App State. Um, of doing, he did a great job of, of – uh, looks like he understands defense, is pressing the edge, sticking foot in the ground, and, and being able to get vertical. So, you know, he did a little bit of everything, and, and I'm looking forward to getting him on the field and see what he can do to help us. And I want to ask you about Kari Blassing game. How did he do after coming in kind of mid-season and how much should having last year in an off-season under his belt help him be on the same page with Derek and really what you want to do? Well, uh, you mentioned that we got him uh, late in the year uh, and threw him in the fire and, and, you know, he learned on the run and he, and he did a good job for us um, for that, that stretch run and he got better each week. And then, you know, this off-season – uh, starting with the virtual meetings, he's able to get everything from the very beginning in terms of the install and, 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 and the, the concepts of plays. You know, so now going forward, he's got that part of it. Now we'll continue to work on the physical part of it. Uh, and, and, you know, it's like anything else. When you're not thinking and you're just reacting and playing, you know, you should be a little bit better. Um, and so I'm looking forward to see how much he'll improve by being here from the very beginning in terms of the install. Uh, so, you know, not his feet not being tied up by his brain, so to speak. So hopefully that, that'll help move him forward and progress. Him. Paul? Tony, I don't want to ask you to double up. Have you talked about Evans pass protecting? Uh, no, I hadn't talked, hadn't hit that part of it yet, but he did it. He did okay, it. can you tell me? Can you tell me about uh, uh, how you go about teaching a rookie uh, to identify and effectively slow a guy down? Well, just um, in terms of pass protection, one, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about fundamentals and techniques, you know, and, and, and ways to get you in the proper position uh, to be able to block defenders. And then as, as we teach pass protecting schemes, 
you know, being able to make sure that his eyes are in the right place. We'll have rules uh, in our protections, and we'll I'll try to do a great job of getting his eyes in the right place so he and putting him in position and know who he has uh, in protection and what his rules and progressions are. And you know, so you t then you tie the rules progressions to the protection, and then and then you tie that into the different fundamentals and techniques. And hopefully, I, um, I can help put him in position to be successful as a pass pro blocker. Are these are these other skills we're excited to see reliant on him first being able to do that? No, I think right now he's he's like everybody else. He he's he's a rookie, he's new new to the organization and, and he's here to go out and compete every day in practice and just show us his abilities and the different things that he can do. And then as we get closer to the game time and sort of make uh, game plan type decisions, we'll go based on um, what he's shown us uh, throughout the preseason practices uh, leading up to the first game. Appreciate you. Lennon. Hi, Tony. Um, I was going to ask you about Darrington also. Uh, in addition to the pass blocking, um, what are some of the things, you know, a rookie back in, in general has to do well in order to get on the field um, early and sort of uh, along the same lines, I guess I've heard that, that Darrington is a pretty bright guy and does that help him despite the fact that he hasn't had, a, you know, an off season really? Yes, I mean, for, you mentioned it, being, being able to pick things up obviously is the biggest thing because you'll get, as we know, you'll get so many different things, so many different looks and things thrown at you throughout the course of a season in terms of protections and uh, run defense. And so obviously understanding the run schemes that we implement and then understanding the, the past concepts that he'll be a part of and then understanding protection. So obviously he's got, he like everybody else in this room has a lot to learn, you know, um, and then what he can handle, you know, we'll go based on what he can handle. You know, um, we got, you know, Art's a very sharp guy and uh, does a great job of putting all our guys and, understanding what they can do with their strengths and weaknesses are and then putting them in position to be successful. And, you know, he does that and he does, Art does a great job of communicating with our coaching staff about each of our guys. So again, until we get, get them out on the field and, and in live situations and live practice situation, uh, we'll just keep, I'm going to keep teaching them and coaching them and then we'll see what he can handle. And then we'll figure out by game plan what he can do to help us be successful on Sunday. Just one last follow. I'm sure you've already answered it. I apologize on, on Evans, but um, I guess uh, at App State last year, they sort of took a look at the Titans, you know, playbook, game plan, and, and tried to emulate a little bit of it. Uh, does that give him a little bit of a, a leg up more than, uh, you know, more than you would expect from a, from a rookie? Oh, I mean, we all know football is football, and, and, and so schemes aren't new. You know, we didn't invent a different scheme than anybody else has, has run before. So, you know, uh, you know, the only thing really changes is terminology. It still comes back to blocking and tackling, right? So, um, obviously, there'll be some terminology differences and, and things like that, but he understands concepts. And, and um so as long as you do, as long as he understands concepts and can understand the game and can, and can pick things up, uh, he'll, he'll be okay.